Metal Gear Solid is a stealth action adventure title produced and developed by Konami Incorporated. Yes, this was way before the publisher kneeled before their patchy slot overlord. This was when Konami took themselves seriously as a badass figurehead amongst the gaming stratosphere. Of course, they all can't take every stitch of goodwill here. Get used to the name Hideo Kojima because you'll be seeing that man's name pop up ever so often. I mean, hell, it pops up so much, you'll even swear that adware on X videos or Pornhub will not get as much love or retention as Hideo Kojima. Rightfully so, because I think that Metal Gear wouldn't be what it is today without his super eccentric mindset. Believe it or not, there was two Metal Gear games that you probably never heard of before MGS1. Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake was crafted on the MSX. For what it's worth, I was able to play these titles from a revised version of Metal Gear Solid 3 called Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. The reason these games are relevant is because you could say Solid really serves as a direct sequel. This is Metal Gear 3. Fun fact, adding solid at the end of the title for this was a symbolic purpose the word solid really stands for 3d which represented a new graphical leap solid formulates revised gameplay in a totally new space for the original PlayStation it represents the name of our flagship hero as well Solid Snake. There were many development hurdles in crafting this iteration. It was even going to be on the 3DO at one point, according to my research. One prominent addition for this venture was Kojima's top draft pick on an artist. That artist's name is Yoji Shinkawa. Shinkawa was the lead artist on the project who had a very particular taste on character appearance within this game. It's a very clear mecha inspired and gritty influence that was applied to this dark industrial complex of Shadow Moses. The director himself needed that accuracy and realism to be polished to a mere sheen, even stating that if the player isn't tricked into believing this world isn't real, then there's no point in making the game. Before diving into plot, I wanted to give an easy recap so you aren't lost on Kojima's mass complexity. Solid Snake is a legendary soldier, fought in many wars, was a Green Beret, etc. He's sort of like a super secret agent who utilizes tactical levels of espionage. That means that he's quiet as a mouse and he still gets the job done on routine warfare. Snake's first real infiltration gig was given to him by a CEO known as Big Boss. This was called Operation Intrude N313 with a goal that involved finding a POW known as Gray Fox. During the finale of Metal Gear, we realized that Big Boss betrayed Snake, revealing himself as the leader behind this whole affair, this whole complex called Outer Heaven. Big Boss is defeated, leading to another event years later. Dr. Keo Marv is kidnapped after creating some groundbreaking research. Dr. Keo Marv was responsible for a new genetically modified oil producing microbe known as Olix. Since during the events of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, the market of oil took a hit in the Metal Gear universe during this time, and it only spelled disaster for greedy, warring countries across the entire planet. Planet. Thus, Marv was taken to Zanzibar land so Olix could fuel the powers that be. It's a big series of events that happen on Zanzibar land, but two critical situations happen that are needed for understanding. The first is Gray Fox supposedly perishing in a minefield against Snake. The second one involves the supposed death of Big Boss after Snake jury rigs a spray bottle and some fire together. Burn, baby, burn. The story of Metal Gear Solid takes place six years after the fall of Zanzibar Land from Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Snake has retired from being a soldier, settling for a normal life as a dog sled musher. However, Colonel Campbell presents a new problem, a new case for our boy instead. He shows Snake a picture of a new terrorist sect under the previous code name of his former unit, Foxhound. What makes things even weirder is that this terrorist outfit 
is being led by a man called Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake almost looks exactly like a near identical splitting image of Solid Snake, which will come into the fray later, but Liquid has blonde hair, so let's keep it distinct and on the down low. Snake's initial job is to rescue the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson. After that, he is tasked with doing some wet work and taking out this new age of Foxhound and stopping any nuclear threats by any means necessary. This story is amazing due to the sheer nature involving so many characters, so many twists, turns, and conspiracy theories that trickles down to your immediate engagement. It doesn't help that this game is also aided by some masterful cinematography and unforgettable tension. I can't tell you how intricate, emotional, and downright thought-provoking some of these scenes were after spending so much time with these cutscenes. There's just so much love, attention to detail, and influences that Kojima pours into his games. Like, I absolutely marked out when I saw the arrival of the Spadetti Western archetype known as Revolver Ocelot, and this is one of my favorite scenes in the entire damn game. Special Operations Foxhound. Revolver Ocelot. I've been waiting for you, Solid Snake. Now we'll see if the man can live up to the legend. This is the greatest handgun ever made. The Colt Single Action Army. Six bullets, more than enough to kill anything that moves. Now I'll show you why they call me... Revolver. Draw! Dude, holy shit, holy shit. Did you see how fucking great that was? There's a reason why this game was considered as the launch pad for all cinematic games going forward. It truly did feel like a small Hollywood movie was being brought to your television in a video game format. Like, it was that crazy. The actors just buy into the characters they created here. Team Foxhound are the bad guys, but you come to peel off their third dimensional layers when Snake finally has to put them out of their misery for the greater good. Sniper Wolf is a perfect example. You'll see her gradually be psychotic for blowing chunks off Meryl with the PSG-1, an action that is further amplified as the perfect game for sport. Human lives, human prey is seen as a contest for Sniper Wolf. After the final battle, she pours her heart out, admitting that she is a Kurdish Iraqi child born into a world of chaos. Nothing but death, blood, and dismay awaited this child. One of her family was picked apart, I think most of her family and friends were picked apart piece by piece until a new purpose was given by Big Boss. In the name of vengeance, I sold my body and my soul. Wolves are noble animals. They're not like dogs. In Yupik, the word for wolf is Keglinek, and the Aleuts revere them as honorable cousins. They call mercenaries like us dogs of war. It's true. We're all for sale at some price or another. But you're different. Untamed. Solitary. You're no dog. You're a wolf. Who are you? Are you Saladin? Everyone's here now. This is when I looked at Metal Gear as more than a video game. 
I looked at it as a traditional work of art. Snake's descent into Shadow Moses only gets deeper when you find out that he's been injected with a special retrovirus known as Fox Die. Fox Die was programmed to kill specific targets by coordinators of his mission under the DIA under certain instructions by Naomi Hunter. Basically, Fox Die is like a more foreign assassination virus that Snake wasn't told about. It's meant to kill the members of Foxhound but there is like these loopholes where people take tranquilizers to suppress but everyone's affected. This leads to the more unexplained mysteries within the game finally getting resolved because there is deaths via heart attack and Snake is the cause of it. He is the vector of Fox die. As comrades and enemies fall, Snake then notices he doesn't have a lot of time left before one climactic battle with the terrorist leader himself, Liquid Snake aka Did You like my sunglasses brother that's right liquid snake was a genetic clone from a project called les enfants terribles the terrible children the terrible sons of big boss solid snake liquid snake and solid snake were all crafted as a way to raise the ultimate soldier they knew Big Boss didn't have a lot of time left either, so they wanted to preserve his legacy by passing on his cursed genes. Genetics are a big part of the core story that Metal Gear Solid gives. Solid Snake being revealed to be a clone, Liquid thinking he had recessive genes the entire time when he didn't, Naomi's DNA research that was used for revenge after her family bond was severed with Grey Fox. Cursed genes and a family tree, a cursed family tree will rise to the occasion in this masterful storytelling. I could go on and on and on, but I think you already know how great this story is. My only gripe is that there is a lot of cutscenes and characterization here. It is all good. However, it creates the dark fact that you could be watching a cutscene within a cutscene. Same for there being a lot of Kodak calls. Presentations like this will not be everyone's cup of tea, especially if you want more of an interactive balance between gameplay and story. Speaking of gameplay, it was very good when you have time to finally sit down and master it. It's presented in a top-down view as Solid Snake roams around the environment. It's a little hard to see at first, but the game feels solid enough that it's not really annoying. You have a first person view mode where you can toggle it on with the triangle button in case you need to survey that area. There's also walls you can hug against as methods of seeing what's around the next corner for a quick camera peek just in case. The Soliton radar shows the cone of view for the enemies. If it's a blue cone of view, that means that the enemy sense is all normal. If it's yellow, then it means they are somewhat aware or they see something strange. When the cone shape turns red, you have the potential of entering a phase called alert, where the entire base then chases after Solid Snake. Considering this is a stealth game, it is imperative for the player to stay silent as long as humanly possible. You can get taken out pretty damn easily in the opening events of the game if you're not paying that much attention, because Snake's health bar is like a mini tricks bar on the first level. You don't get that health increase option until an enemy is defeated that is a boss and you take a deep sigh of relief because your health bar goes up after the fact. Don't worry, the game has many gadgets and weapons to procure on site. This ranges from disabling cameras with chaff grenades that disorients them just a little bit or using Nikita missiles against the enemies because that's always fun blowing people up. Every tool in this game has a purpose even if you don't believe it does until the difficulty options start to get in the way yes your radar can be disabled on hard or extreme so you better be damn good or else you'll be eating bullets like no tomorrow the ai is smart almost too twitchy for my taste but that lends to the nature of the game it nurtures it being unpredictable on a certain aspect i do think some realism was done better in sequels that give you a fair stance what i mean is the game could be brutal with the notion that one alert 
alert means the entire base is on alert as you fight or flight. However, in Metal Gear Solid 2, we see that guards have to radio in for backup first before the main alert commences in the base. There is a plethora of actions in this one like climbing, crawling, wall hugging, punching, neck snapping, dragging, and boss battles that went so far as to fuck with your controller port. I really am just amazed by all of this work, and if I had one word to describe the stealth gameplay, it would be revolutionary. Sure, there's a lot going on under this masterful hood, but once you finally learn it, apply it, and understand how the combat works, then Metal Gear never really felt far too broken. Every battle is earned and justified as you claw yourself to the next encounter for the next battle, and it's just so good. You fight against, like, giant shaman, you'll fight against hindies you'll even fight against a giant t-rex robot at the end who doesn't love that setup all it really does is creates so much tension and drama within the battles itself that is really unparalleled to a certain degree the only nitpicks that i have is stuff like you know the psg1 and why does snake need to go prone each time i fire that baby just a minor inconvenience that had to be fixed in metal gear solid 2 sons of liberty for sure the presentation is simply the bomb baby it's enough said like cutting edge graphics for the time it was stylized to a high degree with the polygon models then you have the professional voice work done by the cast at the time the game was 100 percent well done with voice acting and like i said before it buys you into the experience like some chips on a casino table then you have the world the war-torn spine of sorrow that reflects and cuts against each one of these characters the sadism hope success and evil that resides in shadow Moses as things go on with each particular gut punch not to mention I love how the music is presented in this one when Kojima said he really wanted this sort of vibe where there's like an orchestral nature and is following Solid Snake around he really wasn't kidding the increasing tempo horrific tones and somber lyrics strongly reside in this game at times it even might sound like you're playing a horror game in various stealth segments it's pretty haunting stuff and i say that as a compliment it's, it's a ghost <sighs> The only thing I wish for is that with all this realism, I wish they tried moving mouths for the characters in the cutscene, although I digress, that could be due to limitations. So the Kodak calls are as good as it gets. The controls are pretty easy getting back into after all this time. If you're confused, lost, or irritated on controls, then I think the Kodak do a good job at breaking the fourth wall and aiding any lost player. Campbell's support team is in your corner when you need to get where you need to go. If you're ever lost, then talking to the support team is a fantastic option as well as finding out plot details, weaknesses on the enemies, etc. It's really good on all fronts. Even if the game is a bit cryptic, I managed to really sneak into the groove on things as I went along. It's just a bit strange that running and shooting is mapped to X and circle respectively. Overall, Metal Gear Solid is a refined masterpiece that put a bigger, bolder stamp on stealth action. It proved that the genre was right for the taking after Hideo Kojima bought it to a mainstream level. With superb story, gameplay, action, and dialogue, it's very easy to see that this game set a new standard you're looking at about a nine to six hour campaign maybe it could go a little bit longer if you're really not too adept at the game 
and if you really listen out for everything it could be even longer mgs is a game meant for replay value so harder challenges will await if you're up for the adversity that the game will offer there are also two very different endings depending on what you pick during a torture sequence so you might want to look out for that i'm not going to spoil any foreign details i think mainstream players already know what i'm referring to either way you'll end up with stealth camo or infinite ammo as a result can't be seen or shoot your way out what will you prefer the choice will warrant what you choose to raise the ultimate soldier. You have VR missions that can be played and challenge your abilities within the game and unlockable costumes that will grant Snake a James Bond tuxedo. Despite how many few nitpicks there are with this game, there is no denying that this is definitely a retro classic. It can be a little tough around the edges in terms of difficulty. You might get your ass kicked, but divide, conquer, and stay in that cardboard box for a little bit longer i give metal gear solid a 9.5 out of 10. this is renegade operative i am signing off hopefully you guys enjoyed my retro review for metal gear solid 1 on the playstation 1 tell me what are your fond memories in the comment section below and we will get right into it remember to like the video share and subscribe it really helps me out at the end of the day and i appreciate you once again for being here i'm signing out see you guys later don't scorch yourself too hard under the sun, otherwise I might have to repeat Metal Gear Solid 1 lines to you and say, that takes care of the cremation.